class at Barry to their graduate students during the PhD yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and address yeah. the issues um, that come out of yeah. the Caribbean, yeah. particularly Africa yeah. as well. We have lots of Africans moving into South Florida. Um, this has been an interesting venture in terms of their resistance to knowledge outside of the biomedical system. Um, and it's not easy to integrate it. Um, I was reading this week on the issue that nurses were having in trying to do um, phenomenological and, uh, and, and ethnographic work. Um, they maintain this posture of defense and one has to ask, what are the, the real underpinnings of nursing? What really is their mission if they're so hostile towards other cultural sensibilities, other world views? Um, and it's, so it's become increasingly an issue. Um, and it does cross many borders. Um, so it's not just Lukumi, but in the Caribbean we have Pokamania, we have um, Shango Baptist, we have Obia, and Obia is not even religiously affiliated, but yet many people utilize it. So it is a failure of that system in biomedicine to recognize the science of ancestry. Um, and so this is what we have collectively come together to panel, because the issue has reached that point, that we need an open discussion of the changing sensibilities um, more, more. in South Florida. Okay. So this is what I have lent to it. And uh, in the studies of the Caribbean, most of our populations were born in Miami have been born elsewhere, Europe, South America, uh, English Caribbean. And even when the nurses are from these areas, <laughs> they're not sensitive to it. They have been trained so firmly to fight against it um, that it is, again, time to make a call for an open discussion. Because, uh, in fact, it has no religious or spiritual base in the sense that um, Pokemania or Lukumi, Lukumi um, and many other traditions out of the Caribbean do. Um, but nevertheless, it has crossed cultures and many of the rituals are used. So the practice of Obia and Shango Baptist, Pokemania, Lukumi, and many African and indigenous systems of thought are still with us and alive and well and part of the architecture of our minds. Uh, these traditions practice the phenomena of healing in the Caribbean, religious consciousness, its evolution, its legal prescription, and the practice as a medicine of defense under colonialism particularly. The challenge posed today is for a collaborative relationship between modern medicine and traditions like Obia healing and the difficulties Obia uh, poses for students in mental health. I selected to discuss Obia for a moment because it doesn't have its own identifiable religious system of or organization. It's an oral culture that thrives on different religious traditions and among varying ethnic groups. The result of that versatility are creole practices that practitioners draw on through a rich variety of religious traditions. Obia is practiced in traditional religion and cultures in remote and impoverished communities where alternative medicine is the last lifeline. It is practiced in upscale, poor, middle-class groups. During slavery, the plantation economy, Obia was practiced amongst the Maroons, slaves, from Af free Africans, and poor whites. <coughs> Later, it knew no boundaries. It found reception among people of different faiths, ethnicities, and social standings. Its practitioners were Jamaican, Milas, Pocomanius, Cumanus, 
It is among the Trinidad and Tobago Spiritualist Baptists, the Orisha, um, amongst the Guyanese Hindu, uh, amongst the Muslims and Christians. So it's crossed many borders. Obia appears, appeals to descendants of indentured immigrants, people of African and European descent, and other Creole peoples. Caribbean people of all you and faith may visit Obia men to receive pharmacopoeia or to be corralled by their blessings and receive their omits of fixed trinkets, beads, necklaces, and other good luck charms. A politician may discreetly visit the Obia practitioner during a political campaign. Business people occasionally seek spiritual baths for protection from the evil eye or to come into good fortune. Obia operates outside of constricted boxes of traditional ways of being and conceiving the religious and human health care. The religious tradition is not publicly embraced. Because of the long history of suppression, prescription, and punishment, uh, not to mention stigma associated with the art, people do not openly admit their association with Obia or identify themselves as an Obia woman or an Obia man in a format. Few people will admit to practicing Obia. For the same reason that an Obia man is rarely convicted in a court, it is difficult for sociologists to learn a great deal about Obia man's influence, unlike the avatars of Voodoo, Candomblé, Lukumi, or Orisha, whom a researcher may interview in person. Obia practitioners are difficult to identify with certainty. Rather than carry the title Obia woman or Obia man, one may take the title health provider, facilitator of good health, or servant of God. One may also claim another Afro-Caribbean religious affiliation or traditional medicine. Obia is not restricted to one modus operandi. It uses medicine for causative, therapeutic, protective and punitive effects. Its medicines aim at treating psychological, spiritual, mental, social, and physical health while offering protection against detractors and punishment for offenders. It works like medical provision, psychiatric help, law enforcement combined. Obia originated in West Africa as one of the continent's least significant religious traditions but was an obscure practice in the Caribbean until its obliteration from society became a phobic preoccupation of colonial governments. The African practices were transformed in the crucible of colonialism and slavery into spiritual support for the Afro-Caribbean community. It provided the oppressed alternative avenues through which they could procure medical treatment and access their African powers for psychological reinforcement to survive the wretchedness of plantation life. Africans also used Obia to intimidate others who habitually plundered their meager huts, hogs, skites, and garden plots. Obia was an indispensable defense of a medical we weapon. After emancipation, the poor, propertyless, and unemployed ex-slave ward of the British crown were uh, instrained in colonial society and had to rely on African traditional religions and medicine to fight poor health, injustice, new forms of oppression, and other colonial miseries. Obia was a term referred, that referred to any African religion by the British. It was a commonly used term that anyone practicing an African tradition was put in the box of, oh, that's Obia. It meant any African religion that was assigned uh, many sinister, and it was assigned many sinister designations. Phobia was African, secretive, vaguely understood, and historically transgressive in nature. Officially, it consumed outlaw, alleged superstitions. It made colonists nervous of Africans given to slave uprisings and it was seen as working against the harmony and welfare of colonial society. So since the 1700s, Obia was criminalized throughout the Anglophone Caribbean 
and remained that way until recent times in many island states. This is how they see us as outlaws to the culture. And so when we enter that biomedical system, we find a resistance. Um, just as today the Western world doesn't revere uh, complementary and alternative mm -hmm. medical science as a medicine, the colonials saw Africans as uncivilized, backwards, primitive, and a void of religion and culture. White spirit obia because of its clandestine activities, dreaded poisons, its alleged relationship to secret deaths and slave revolts, and the fact that it was irrational to the scientific worldview of Enlightenment Europe. This fear often worked to the advantage of slave plantations that were able to garner better treatment for the masters overcome by fear of obia. A transgressive force against the drum and beat of the colonial plantation, secret revol revolts, arson, poisoning, suicide, spiritual science, which slaves had known in Africa, creolized in the Caribbean to meet their needs. Obia provoked an ideological rallying point in sanctioning rebellion, affording meeting places and leaders, and formed a repository for the collective memory of Africans by preserving their tradition, which could be opposed to the dominant colonial culture. Its particular act of resistance occasionally necessitated violence, aiding slave revolts, poisoning a master or a slave, or fixing an overseer with a fatal illness of paralysis. This sub subversive character of Bobia was evident in the slave revolt of the 1700s. Uh, in a Caribbean arena that constantly brewed new and unpredictable challenges, virtually every group had to be creative to survive. There has been a resurgence. There has been periodically a resurgence of interest in these forms. They have presented in terms of healing in the face of a failing public health system. To the British, Obia operated outside of the constricted boxes. Obia comes to public attention and scrutiny only in times of economic hardship, stress, sickness, and critical need. Over the next few discussions, we will discuss some of the health needs ancestral traditions provide that the biomedical system has failed on assessing and providing. We will discuss some of the signals of recognizing practitioners and the needs that biomedical practitioners can easily provide. People make choices between competing systems. Now, I have interviewed many people practitioners of ancestral traditions here in Miami, and they clearly express uh, the fact that these are comforting to them. These give guidance to them, um, where the biomedical system does absolutely fails, um, particularly people who are just migrating from the Caribbean. Medical plural, pluralism, at one moment, a topic of interest, but it has over the past 30 years dropped out of the academy as a central topic, and this is why we have to revitalize it. We hope that these discussions will help to dispel some of the myths and correct some of the misinformation about folk medicine prevalent among Americans and West Indians or Caribbean people. Caribbean scholars have uh, prepared a handbook on health practitioner patient communication, which will include folk terminology of the illness and of human anatomy. Um, in Jamaica, for example, it's necessary to distinguish three modalities of culture, including health and healing practices, the official, modern, and the popular culture and the tradition or folk culture. We've used the word folk, sometimes ethnomedicine is used. Um, but our focus has not been CAM, uh, although CAM is, is treated in the same light. Our focus has been the indigenous traditions that have come out of the ancestry 
There's always been difficulty determining what to call a mission. Terms, as I've said, such as uh, traditional medicine, folk medicine have emerged. All medicines are ethnic medicines. Mm -hmm. But we tend to think of the divide between modern and traditional medicine as a worldview which focuses on the body and rejects spirit and cosmos, and to a lesser extent, mind, in the concept of health and illness. Um, as being universal to all other medicines. Uh, the resurgence has placed policy in diverse medical care in the forefront of need today. Um, we are interested in focusing on policy and what this means for the traditions represented in uh, particularly South Florida, our, our focus. Um, 